Hi, we're the Watson Twins, and we're here at the Garden and Gun headquarters for a bat porch session. This first song is called The Palace. Another night at the palace Won't be a double in the chalice If you won't be my king I'll wear the crown Cause this watering hole my home This bar stool is my throne If we ain't making up I'll throw them down Cause when I'm here job in Aspen, but I know where his hat's been, and he ain't even been to Pigeon Forge. Give me a top boy so I don't feel it, dirty dance floor, cheap tequila, and my next friend just walked right through the door. Cause when I singing together when we were about eight years old. We were in the church choir, as you do, in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, we were singing for the, for the church choir leader, and she said, um, you know, I think these girls can kind of instinctually just harmonize already, and she pulled my mom aside and said, hey, if, if you want me to teach them a few things, I can do that, and it was pretty much, I mean, our mom says that we were singing together before we could even talk, so she was like, you were always making sounds together. And, uh, and communicating with each other. So I think it was just a natural evolution to, to be singing. And, and we actually used to get in trouble at the dinner table for singing. <laughs> um, that was one of those things where Mama would be like, I love it, but you've got to eat your dinner. You can't sing at the dinner table. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and we did have a very uh, a musical household in the sense that our mom was a real appreciator of music. So she had a vast record collection. And, you know, she surprisingly liked everything from Emmy Lou Harris and Willie Nelson to Pink Floyd to The Stones, um, James Nirvana. Taylor, Nirvana <laughs> and Pearl Jam. Like she, she was, she had this like really wide appreciation for music. And so I think that's really where, you know, when we started listening to more music and, um, 
being from Louisville, there's a there was always like a punk rock, hardcore kind of scene there. And we actually came up in that scene, which is pretty funny to think about. So um, here are these two girls playing folk music and indie rock and ending up in Americana um, by way of punk rock and hardcore. I don't know. It, <laughs> it makes sense somehow, some way. But, you know, seeing our friends when you're a teenager getting out there and touring on the road and everything, it just didn't seem... It didn't seem that it was that unattainable. So we started writing our own music and, um, and yeah, moved out to Los Angeles to, to pursue that dream and have found ourselves, found our way back to the South, back to Nashville. Back to Nashville, yeah. And, uh, and just loving being a part of the, the music scene there. This next song is called Southern Manners. And uh, we wrote it actually when we had moved to Los Angeles. Um, you know, there's something about being in the South that, I don't think if you, if you don't grow up here, you maybe you don't understand it, but it's like, you know, people nod and wave to complete strangers and strike up conversations with, you know, the cashier at the grocery store <laughs> or, um, you know, the postman or whoever. And uh, we moved to California and to Los Angeles. And when we started trying to talk to people, they thought we were crazy or maybe we wanted money or something. So, you know, waving at people and smiling at people, they just kind of look at you like, what is your problem? Um, and it made us homesick, you know, there's, there's something that, uh, about that comfort of the community and, and the kindness of people, um, that is probably the biggest thing we missed about living on the West Coast was just that, that sense of, of Southern hospitality. And so we wrote this song, Southern Manners, and it's, it's masking the metaphor of a lover, but it's really about, um, missing that, that piece of home and those people that, that make it so special. Well, I can't tell you I left you And I don't quite know why I'm here But nothing has moved my spirit Since I saw you lay last year Although our minds recall each heartache A little loving can take away the pain oh, Hold me, hold me, hold me close Caress my shoulders and my toes And make me forget what I can when you please and when you're broke down on the road well he'll come on by and light your load that's
Chandra and I actually write all of our music together. Uh, we did it for a long time in our last two records. We decided to collaborate. I know that sounds ridiculous that we've yeah, been... Yeah, it's like twins writing separately <laughs> their whole life, and then suddenly there's an epiphany. Why don't you work together? Why don't you work <laughs> together? Because we've been working together our whole lives. Um, but, you know, I think ultimately, like, as twins, you really try to create your own identity. And so um, songwriting was a place that we could have our very own. We shared DNA. We shared bedrooms. We shared parents and family and friends. And so that songwriting piece was really something that um, felt personal to us as individuals. And um, we wrote like that for many years. And then on our last few records, we decided to collaborate. And um, yeah, it just it just clicked. It was like we've been given this gift of being twins and and knowing how to collaborate in so many different ways and always having to compromise and yeah. push each other and, and do things together that um, we feel like this, this newest record is some of our strongest material to date. And uh, we're really excited to share just the message of Holler, which is the, the title, title track, track. Yeah. on the record. Um, and it's, it's about, you know, well, I, I guess we could talk about where it started and where it ended. Well, I think, you know, there's obviously just um, a lot of times as a, a writer, you know, you're very in touch with, of course, the world around you and what's happening. And so um, it felt like a particularly dark time um, at that moment when we started writing Holler. And we had made a conscious decision to really on this record to focus on the positive and to really write songs that we felt like were simple messages that people could come together around and sing together and and so this idea of holler was, um, you know, it's not a place, as oftentimes in the South, the holler is a place. Um, this is actually the sound, the holler. And so um, it started actually kind of as a lament. It was kind of a sad <laughs> song. And we were like, like oh, wait, wait, we're like, wait, oh, shoot, we were supposed to be writing happy songs. Okay, so we got to turn this around. And I think, you know, that's sort of a simple metaphor for life. It's like we can look at a lot of things as challenging, and, and there are certainly a lot of challenging things, but it's like trying to pick out the little nuggets of goodness and the little moments of, of light positivity. And, and positivity in those situations. And so really this song came about in really being the idea that together um, we are stronger together. If we can push something forward that is positive and that is good for, for everyone, that um, the world will just be a better place. And so really this this song is is meant to it's meant to encourage people to think about that and um and it starts off by saying hey let me show you how to sing this song and so uh it's about that yeah that collective spirit of people coming together and maybe even singing together so this one's called holler shall we holler the truth and carry on gotta keep on trying harder why can't we all just get along holler if you hear me holler if you hear me holler if you hear me holler if you hear me
I'm Lee. I'm Chandra. Our guitar player, Stephen. Thank you for having us, Garden and Gun. Thank you, Garden and Gun. We love you guys. See you next time.